Good evening. It's good to see. And again, I don't see you, but I know that there are some people who are with us now, and we'll have a little study this evening on the topic of justification. And it probably won't be as long as it that we do study sometimes, but I want to help us to understand this in a simple way and how this comes about as we have a relationship with Jesus. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Father in heaven, dear Jesus, thank you so much that we can come to you this evening and that we can study some important topics in the spirit of prophecy, especially, and talk about how Jesus has paid for our sins on the cross and that we can have justification, full and free. And we're just so grateful for that. And thank you, Jesus. Name. Amen. Recently, some of us have been talking about the concept of justification. Now, what does it mean? What does justification mean? The word itself. My grandfather was a, he did many things, but one of the things, he was a builder. And so I learned somehow in hearing him talk about things that need justification or to justify when you're building. Otherwise, you're going to have a crooked building. So if the boards need to be one with each other as you put them together. And so justification, well, justification is the same thing, is to bring us together with God on the topics that he, of his love, of his, of what he has done to save us, what he provides for us, and justifying our minds so that our mind it becomes one with his mind. In talking about this, I want to spend a little time going over the, the topic of how when we are born, we are a product of humanity, a product of our parents, the whatever they were thinking and feeling and what is in the home and in the heredity is how we're, our mindset begins. And so that when we have justification and, and all of that is, is of the human nature after the fall. And so we have sin and we see things in, through the eyes of our sinful nature. And we receive, receive from our mother in the womb or in our childhood growing up. And we see it through eyes that have come down through history. And we have inherited all because we're in a sinful world. Now, D Jesus then came to bring us justification because he wants to share with us what the perfection that with which we were created. So I'm going to begin by reading here in um, Homeward Bound by Ellen G. White. It's actually from manuscript releases, but the purpose of talking about this is because we inherit a feeling of sinfulness, something is wrong with us, and we carry with us the burden of the sinfulness of the human race since Adam and Eve sinned. And I want to talk about that a little bit. And many times Christians, when they become, when they give their heart to the Lord, we feel that when we sin, we've got to make it up somehow by doing better in order to prove to God that we are want to be Christians. And we feel guilt and we feel like hiding from 
the Lord kind of like Adam and Eve after they sinned, they hid from the Lord and tried to cover themselves with fig leaves. And that is still what we do when we be become Christians, especially we feel that something is wrong if we make mistakes too. And, and God wants to bring us to the place where we feel the love of God in drawing us into his presence and into a relationship with him. Uh, I'm going to read this article page here in Homeward Bound. It's page 108 in case anybody has it. Many commit the error of trying to define really the fine points of the distinction between justification and sanctification. Justification is, is uh, seeing us correct, right, holy, acceptable, and so forth. But sanctification is having a change in the heart so that we become more and more and more cleansed and become more and more like Jesus. It's interesting to me that the word sanctification is the same root, has the same root as the sanctuary. Sanctification and sanctuary is the same root. And so let's just think about that word sanctification for a little bit. You start out in the sanctuary needing to get our sins forgiven and cleansed and living a life in harmony with, with the Lord. And so sanctification is accomplished in the sanctuary. Into the definitions of these two terms, bring their own ideas and speculations. Why try to be more minute than is inspiration on the vital question of righteousness by faith? Why try to work out everything as if the salvation of the soul your understanding of this matter all cannot see in the same line of vision you are in danger of making of an atom and an atom of the world as penitent penitent seeker sinners contrite before god discern christ's atonement in their behalf and accept this atonement as their only hope in this life and the future life their sins are pardoned this is justification by faith. Now, I wanted to dwell on that a little bit until we're sure that we're, we're understanding this. As penitent seekers contrite before God, discern Christ's atonement in their behalf and accept this atonement as their only hope in this life and the future life, their sins are pardoned. And so when we're concerned about something that we've experienced during the day and the coming to the Lord and, and realizing that he has paid for that and accepting that and helps us to understand that, that in accepting his righteousness, our sins are pardoned. But is that the end of our journey? Absolutely not. This is justification by faith. Every believing soul is to conform his or her will entirely to God's will and keep in a state of repentance and contrition, exercising faith in the atoning merits of the Redeemer and advancing from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Pardon and justification are one and the same thing. Just think about that. Yeah. Uh, yes. I'd just like to add something to this. Please. Is that sanctification is just in the justification maintained? Is because the reformers <clears throat> taught this clear separation. But Alan White and I know their selective messages, I just heard it today, and Wagner and Jones did not teach it that way. It was once you are justified and you are made righteous. When you are justified, you are then made righteous. No, no one says that. There is like the messages I can show so you. Mm -hmm. No, no, they're in agreement. Oh. It's that we are separating it. So not you, but as a church, we separate those concepts. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like sanctification is like justification maintained in a holy living. It's but much, it's much closer. It's a much closer concept than the separation of it.
I'm seeing. This is a, a deep subject. It is for me. And but but I felt the need of at least discussing it to yeah. some extent. I certainly can't and don't want to try to understand everything that could possibly be said about it because there's not enough book to contain that. We have one that's several inches thick and uh, in how Jones and Wagner brought about a new concept about the forgiveness of Christ for our sins. It's interesting that regular Protestantism wa want to feel that when we accept Christ, we're justified and declared, and declared righteous. Yeah. And that that is permanent unless you, you know, unless you leave the Lord and so forth, but you have salvation. And so you can go ahead with your life and you have problems and whatever, but you have been justified and sanctified or justified at least when you first accept the Lord. But we believe in a continuing walk with the Lord day by day, not that when you sin, you lose your salvation. But when you sin, we bring that to the Lord and work it out with him and ask him what, what it, we can do to grow into that oneness. Justification means that, like I said about my grandfather being a builder, you want the, the two things to be one with each other. And so we want to be one with the concepts that Jesus has brought us of his love and mercy and forgiveness and what to do to continue living in that. Carol? Uh, yes. The way I understood it, it was explained to me, well, it is to be justified, is to be set right, like you would in a typewriter. Mm -hmm. And so sanctification is the work of constantly being set right. right. So it's, it's a continual it's, it's, growing, and you mm -hmm. can't stop it once when you're a baby, not growing and saying, mm -hmm. okay, you're safe right now. You keep growing and growing and being continually set right in every area of your life. And that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's continual maintaining the justification. Well, the, the unfortunate thing is, is that, you know, that the church in places has taken the position of the reformers. And the reformers did not teach correctly mm -hmm. that you're declared righteous. And, you know, whereas we believe that, you know, when you're justified, you are made righteous, at least at that point, as far mm -hmm. as I understand, mm -hmm. so, you know, you're not being made righteous. And the tendency to want to work your way back. In other words, right. when I sin, mm -hmm. then I don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. and, and, and back with Jesus until I can do it right. right it's like okay i didn't eat too much today or whatever the problem may be and, and but when i finally get to the place if i if i do it right then I, then i feel justified right. rather than the fact that jesus paid for our sins and we can come gladly to him and receive the power to live the justified life mm -hmm. as well and forgiveness and mercy when as we're struggling and god wants us to come to him and and receive that immediately i see you know the justification with this pardon is where we obviously were off base we sinned and maybe didn't know all the reasons why or anything like that and that sanctification is where we're coming more and more into harmony with God mm -hmm. as he works with us and as we're walking with him, we're understanding him better. Mm -hmm. We're understanding a little more why we've done these things and why it's not really that great of an idea. We're just more in agreement with him mm -hmm. uh, as we are learning, just like a child, you know, and we mm -hmm. had an amazing talk with my grandson, Junior, who's 13, you know, talking about cell phone use and you know, for a while he was in compliance and now then we were having issues and whatever, but there was a breakthrough. There was a breakthrough in understanding and, and it was just awesome to see the Holy Spirit do that. And not that he'll be perfect all the time from now on, but we're more in harmony and understanding each other better mm -hmm. going forward. And so I see Jesus do that as we are 
walking with him that more and more years that go by it's like we're more in harmony with him now it's not the full cleansing where that you know the full root might not be out but we're we're grappling and walking with the lord understanding him better amen wonderful so pardon and justification are one and the same mm -hmm. thing and he has provided pardon for us and when we is pardoned, we are justified. But that doesn't mean, of course, we can keep on going and sinning and sinning and sinning and just to stay at that level because we want to grow until we are justified or we come into harmony on that thing. If we have a repeating sin, it is because we really aren't in agreement. I mean, if we do it and continue to do it and continue to do it, because we're not in agreement on that particular issue. We haven't been justified in the sense of coming together to have the same concept of that as God has. And of course, Jesus provided justification for us so that we can grow and still be friends with God. So that we don't have to crawl back and, and, and say, you know, I'll be good. I'll, I'll try to be better. You know, just don't turn your face away from me. And there's a lot of fear in that in some. And that, that when we sin, we can't have God's love until we prove to him that we'll do better the next time. Then once we've, we feel we've proved to him. And then we deserve his favor, but he gives us his favor and his love and then helps us to come into agreement with him on the basis of love and not the guilt. And uh, so uh, working it through with the Lord afterwards so right. that we understand better rather right. than just, you know, hiding in guilt and feeling that, oh, we'll do better next time. Why are we going to do better next time if we don't work it through and come into a, a, a deeper understanding mm -hmm. of why the Lord is having this be or rule or, mm -hmm. or whatever, finding out too why it's such an issue in our lives. Mm. Justification is the opposite of condemnation. God's boundless mercy is exercised toward those who fall who are wholly undeserving. His death on the cross made it possible for him to love sinners and all our sinners, but even those who are not coming to him at that point, and to love them and to reach out to them and to draw them to himself is a process. He forgives transgressions and sins for the sake of Jesus. Now, I think, I don't know exactly how to, to see that. Maybe we can talk about that a little bit. That, that is God the Father talking about forgives transgressions and sins for the sake of Jesus. I, I, because he died, so we could be free. Right. So certainly that would be part of it. So, so there would be no way for sinners to ship with God if it weren't that Jesus already paid the price of sin is, and our relationship with him is not one of guilt and condemnation until you shape up or ship out type of thing, but one loving relationship because the sin has been paid for but now we can have that relationship with Jesus that brings us into total harmony as we walk with, with each other. And I often use the example of Peter after he, after he cursed and said he didn't know Jesus. Notice that when, when Jesus talked to Peter, he didn't say anything about what he had done. He talked about the relationship. Do you love me? He said, do, Peter, do you love me? And that was the healing. That was the justification that had been, that Jesus, um, that Jesus does, has done for us so that he can talk lovingly to us and draw his, us to himself and that we are not crawling back, but we're coming to him 
for his loving arms around us and to help us to, to understand his great love for us. Through faith in Christ, the guilty transgressor is brought into favor with God and into the strong hope of life eternal. Yeah, so, so whenever we sin on a certain point, of course we confess and we're justified. And then by God's power, we walk in that victory. Walk in that so victory. it's very much tied together. Amen. It's the assault of the other. And Peter... It's interesting. That's right. It's confession. confession. Peter denied knowing Jesus three times. Right. And so Jesus, parallel, said, "Do you love me? You can't. You can't mm -hmm. love somebody you don't know mm -hmm. three times." Mm -hmm. um, so it is a matter of getting back to Jesus. Do you know? Do you want to know me? Mm -hmm. Do you want to know me and love me? Do you want to love me? Mm -hmm. This is why I'm asking you to obey. This is why I'm asking you. To Set you right into mm -hmm. the Lord. Do you want to love me? Yeah. Uh, so when we continue in a certain sin, we really don't see the magnitude of it, and we don't see God, Jesus' love, mm -hmm. now to free mm -hmm. us and to redeem us from that. Right. Amen. You see, because then we can. We don't see Him in it. Then we're motivated. Then there's a motivation, a power, of course, that comes from God, right. for us to walk in that righteousness. And so every person is born with the sin guilt that sin has made and passed on down. I want to tell a little story about a little girl. She, I think she's two and a half. And her parents are separating. And of course, to a child, that is a very upsetting experience. And they don't understand it. And so there's a lot of pain involved in a separation for the children as well as the parents. And one day when something had happened, I don't know what, her mother disciplined her, gave her a little smack or something. It was just some kind of maybe a little spanking. I, I, I don't know, but it was something that that happened and after this experience she did something that I I've never thought of before that a child would do that but she got down on all fours and would rock back and forth and did it all day all day and just rocking back and forth on all fours and so when I heard about it I knew just in my spirit, I knew that this was because she had taken the guilt for the separation and that she was trying to probably work her way back into out of the situation emotionally. I don't, I've just never seen anything like that where a child of that early age takes on the sins of the parents, but that happens to everyone. And the Bible says that the sins of the parents are passed on down from generation to generation, at least to the third and fourth generation. And so when something happens, before children understand, before human beings understand justification uh, and sanctification and the love of God and what they have done to provide healing for us, every human being will take on guilt and feel that there's only one way to work, somehow to work back in and pay the penalty for sin. I don't know whether any of you have a, a story or an experience where you can say, that's how human beings feel, is we feel that we must pay the penalty, and it's our fault that something bad has happened or whatever. She may feel that more so because the tribe right. just one thought that came to me. Right. Same like, as mine. Know, and and by, so yeah. that's why I recognized that's it so quickly, thinking, yeah. is that she's the same tribe yeah. as I am, which yeah. is Levi. Mm -hmm. And Levi tribes have a heavy sense of guilt. 
and fear of doing the wrong thing. And, well, um, in some ways they carry having to work your way back. And uh, in some ways they carried what the eleven tribes did in a way. Right. In some way they were chosen. Right. And uh, so if we sin and we don't understand the love of God and the justification that he has provided, then we can go through a, a lot of pain and anguish and blaming ourselves and so forth that Jesus doesn't want us to do. He wants us to run into his arms of love. I share that we talked to a family member because working in the child care center and also working with pre-K students and such over the years, and you see the different behaviors of young children when they're stressed and when they're going through things. And interestingly enough, you can talk about things in a really simple way to help the child to work through it. And so, you know, I counseled how to talk with a two-year-old to work them past it, to talk about what happened with mommy and daddy, how they used to live together and now they don't mm -hmm. and why, and that it's not your fault and mommy loves you, daddy loves you and those types of things. And then, anyway, it was deeper than that, but just that's a, a good background there and just ask them questions and things they can process a lot when they're even very young and so the story came back that, that was done and handled that way and that the child responded amazingly mm -hmm. and was able to feel so much better mm -hmm. afterwards and and, and um, she was asked you know do you, do you do that? She, she agreed that she felt better so it's just neat how we're like God's little children and he can work things through with us in that same way because he's not blaming and condemning and criticizing us when we make mistakes. He knows what the root is mm -hmm. that's causing that strange behavior mm -hmm. and or not so strange behavior, you know, and he can help us to find out with him what's behind it. What are we, what are we stressed about? What is the, what are we really worried about? And then talk to us about the core issue mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and resolve it. Well, you, you said years ago that when there's a divorce, the child feels it's their fault. Right. Remember, That's they, common. They, they, they to blame themselves. So bl to blame one's, blame. So the children blame. take on the blame. Say, <laughs> right. Now this, I'm going to read a little bit here in my book. Homeward Bound, page 106. The other was 108. And it goes into this a little bit more. We must learn in the school of Christ, nothing but his righteousness can entitle us to one of the blessings of the covenant of grace. Hmm. Again, realizing that we're not going to be able to work our way back out of guilt, but to go to him and receive from him his character, his love, and so forth. We have long desired and tried to obtain these blessings, but have not received them because, if, and if you don't remember anything else, maybe you can remember this, because we have cherished the idea that we could do something to make ourselves worthy of them. That is such a key. That's such a key. I think that every human being experienced this when they accept Christ, if they, if they know the Lord, and to feel that we can do something to win his favor. And we must, especially if we've done something wrong, and we can do that justification bringing us together by our good works. That ties in the original lie, you shall be a scum. Mm -hmm. You want to be your own God, you want to fix this thing. Yeah. But that's right. And that's how our childhood is, too, where we, you know, mommy and daddy are not happy with something we're doing, and there's discord or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you try to work back into favor or do things better, and you don't know 
how to, you know, necessarily do it with justification or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's that habit in childhood too that comes from the sinful nature. But it's also, I mean, there's a good side in that we are supposed to make efforts, you know, right, to right. do the right thing. Right. But obviously it's mixed. Mm -hmm. We have not looked away from ourselves, believing that Jesus is a living savior. We must not think that our own grace and merits will save us. The grace of Christ is our only hope of salvation. Through his prophet, the Lord promises, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. And so what is the first thing that we are to do? We are to return to the Lord and not try to work our way back by good, good deeds, although we want to do, do right. That's not the point but to trust in our good deeds to win salvation or to win it. But we trust in Jesus and then the good deeds are a result of our relationship with mm -hmm. the Lord. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon Isaiah 55, 7. We must believe the naked promise and not accept feeling or faith. I think she's putting it so clearly. When we trust God fully, when we rely upon the merits of Jesus as a sin-pardoning Savior, we shall receive all the help that we can desire. I just think that this is so beautiful. We look to self as though we had power to save ourselves, but Jesus died for us because we are helpless to do this. In him is our hope, our justification, our righteousness. We should not despond and fear that we have no savior or that he has no thoughts of mercy toward us. At this very time, he is carrying on his work in our behalf, inviting us to come to him in our helplessness and be saved. We dishonor him by our unbelief. It is astonishing how we treat our very best friend. How little confidence we repose in him who is able to save to the uttermost and who has given us every evidence of his great love. Let none here feel that their case is hopeless, for it is not. You may see that you are sinful and undone, but it is just on this account that you need a savior. If you have sins to confess, lose no time. These moments are golden. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us, our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, the second part is just as important as the first part come to Him and receive forgiveness and mercy. And then also, we will receive cleansing from all unrighteousness. And isn't it interesting that it says all unrighteousness? And uh, we have studied some perfection. And of course, the Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy talks about coming into perfection but if we can put it in understandable words about perfection what is to become perfect our perfection comes from coming to the lord receiving his mercy and forgiveness and then allowing him to work out his perfection yeah. in us That's and right. through us yeah. to live his life to live his life yeah. in yes. and yeah. through us that's something yeah. right and not in gritting our teeth and trying harder and harder to work out perfection in our own lives but to receive the love and mercy and forgiveness and for uh, that relationship with jesus well i think that the holiness is agreement with god peace right is that working things through mm -hmm. because we're making mistakes because we're in disagreement with him about Amen. something exactly. we don't know what it is mm -hmm. but we ask you know we ask where where is the trouble spot where am i thinking in ways that are not like you what how what do i need to know about how you feel about this so that i do your will and not my own you may see 
that you are sinful and undone, but it's just on this account that you need a savior. If you have sins to confess, lose no time. The moments are golden. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So coming to the Lord is our first step in the finished work of, of holiness, which is agreement with God. Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. For Jesus has promised it, precious Savior. His arms are open to receive us, and his great heart of love is waiting to bless us. So I know sometimes in that I've has experienced it, and also people tell me that this is what they feel, that when we sin, God is angry or you know, God is displeased with us and uh, he, the, the negativity now that we feel, we put upon Jesus as if he's feeling that way about it too and about us. And yet it says here, his arms are open to receive us and his great heart of love is waiting to bless us so instead of thinking i really can't come to the lord until i do it right so i'm going to try hard to do it right this time and let's say overeating for one thing and oh i overate this time well i'm going to have to do it right before i can come to the lord mm. no Come to the Lord, as it says here, his arms are open to receive. If we could picture in our minds him with his arms open, they are open. Not they will open when we get there or, and confess, but they are now open to receive us. And if we could picture that in our minds and not be afraid, we come to him. See that. I kind of see when we invite Jesus into our lives, you know, when Jesus comes into our lives, he always finishes when he starts. Mm -hmm. So he's going to finish the work in us mm -hmm. as we keep him, as you know, he lives in our hearts and lives. And I, I understand why, you know, uplifting Jesus is, is really a huge part of this is, you know, yes. just really connecting with his heart of love and, mm -hmm. and, 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 just uplifting the Lord. Yes, he know. is the key, yeah. knowing that he loves us yeah. and wants to help us. His arms are open to receive us, and his great heart of love is waiting to bless us. You yeah. know, our whole our whole church started, you know, Daniel 8:14. And the sanctuary shall be cleansed. Amen. So our lives will be cleansed. Right. And this one says our soul temple will shall be turned success so we enter by faith into that day and so we have, have to believe that exactly. but but it's only in terms of the relationship with jesus of course mm -hmm. like, you know is, is oh is yes connecting with him and having him come into our hearts and motivate us and lead us and guide us but if you don't have a right concept of god you can't go no. you just can't go if you don't understand the first angel's message to fear god and give him glory the power of the judgment if you don't understand all the messages of the gospel first yes and know how much you're loved you're not going to go any further because mm -hmm. you're going to be afraid of God yeah. and afraid of the cleansing. Because mm -hmm. love motivates. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Love, God uses love and truth. Yeah. He doesn't coerce us. He doesn't manipulate us. He doesn't force us to believe mm -hmm. that he's a God of love. Mm -hmm. And I know we shy away from that to a degree. is because we've heard so much, you know, love of Jesus, love of Jesus. So it leads to antinomianism. We don't believe, you know, in the law of God. But when it's rightly presented, it doesn't go there. Yeah, justice. It doesn't go there, you know, at all. You know, that movie about Ellen White and our pioneers. Uh, Tell the world. Tell the world. In the movie, before Ellen accepted the a message of William Miller. It showed them going to church and oh, yeah. the preacher was a Helen mm -hmm. and Fire and Brimstone yeah. preacher. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, that scared her so much, but it showed him preaching 
that in, in graphic detail, uh, the, the sinners <coughs> that didn't repent would be sent to hell and burn, you know, and he said this behemoth, and some preachers still do. Uh, I heard recently about, about that in a non-Adventist congregation about hell and ever burning, ever burning hell for our sins if we don't come to the Lord. And so this is a, a we can participate maybe a little bit in, in a similar thing if we think that when we sin, that Jesus turns away from us and is angry and that we have to work our way back and prove to him that we're victorious before he can love us again. And so we have to be really, really sensitive to our spirit about how we feel about God's love and, and his efforts to win our hearts by his love. Doesn't Ellen White say you keep Jesus too far away? Somewhere um, she says something mm -hmm. like that. You just keep him at arm's length or something like that. And I know. Go ahead. I know I keep going back to the childhood, but we're very effective too, depending on our upbringing, our view of God. Mm -hmm based on how we were punished or how we were handled, it can increase. I mean, everybody, even in the best of homes, still has from Adam and Eve that fear mm -hmm. of making that mistakes, th those mistakes. Mm -hmm. But that's compounded if your view of God has been affected by mm -hmm. a harsh parent or, and I know, you know, I was talking to someone where, there, every time they did something wrong, their parent would completely ignore them and like kind of isolate that mm -hmm. child to, to punish them with cold, ice cold silence mm -hmm. until they would capitulate. They would, you know, come back begging on their knees, so to speak, and just, oh, you know, to mommy, this and that and the other, and to try to you know, get his, oh, I'll do the appeasing, appeasing. lots of appeasing, appeasing to get her to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. And so that makes it much more difficult than, mm -hmm. you know, if somebody listening is struggling, that you can also compare, you know, how you felt as a child with authority and how they, they handled you. And of course, mm -hmm. we forgive our parents anything that mm -hmm. went awry, but to realize that God is perfect and he doesn't handle us that way at all. Right. Okay, this is the last paragraph. Some seem to feel that they must be on probation and must prove to the Lord that they are reformed before they can claim his blessing. But these dear souls may claim his blessing even now. They must have his grace, the spirit of Christ, to help their infirmities, or they cannot form a Christian character. And that's a very, very vital point. Mm -hmm. is if we stay away trying to make ourselves right we can't we have to come to the lord and receive his grace mm -hmm. and his spirit to help us or we cannot form a christian character now here's our last sentence jesus mm -hmm. loves to have us come to him just as we are mm -hmm. sinful mm -hmm. helpless dependent mm -hmm. Sinful, helpless, dependent. And of course, we have received this legacy because of Adam and Eve. And it's come down all these thousands of years. And the only way to make that right was Jesus and what he has done in providing justification and walking with him is sanctification. So, all right. Very good. Let's. I like that. I'm reading some of that. It's, it's really nice. Yes. Thoughts expressed mm -hmm. on, on those pages. It's just really a nice way to do it. Well, one of the reasons why I chose this topic mm -hmm. is because recently I was talking to someone, and and they they lived or live, mm -hmm. and are trying to learn this this side of Jesus, but to feel, and, and they had a severe father, very severe father. And it's, it, it, you know, punitive and 
and blaming and angry. And so a lot of it comes down in families, but uh, also comes down in the human race. Mm -hmm. And so all of us are tempted to feel that way. And that's why Jesus had to come and display his love in every possible way and then die for our sins. And now he lives to intercede for us. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, dear Jesus, thank you so much for all that you have done to provide for us a place in your heart and a place in your kingdom. And I pray that you will help us not to listen to Satan mm. can, with his condemnation and accusation and the depressiveness of his presence. And we just want to be with you and we want to accept what you have done for us and love you until we see you in the clouds and get to live with you forever in that wonderful place in heaven where you are and where we can be with you even now in our faith and trust uh, and relationship and so we thank you in jesus name amen